Hi, this is Team Volter. Uh, my name is Grace Stout, uh, Team Captain. CJ Chung is our faculty advisor. We're uh, going to go ahead and, and introduce the rest of our team now. Uh, John Rizala from uh, Long Tech, Master of Computer Science. Brian Matthews, Long Tech, Bachelor of Computer Science. Dan McGee, Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Chris Anders, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Uh, John Abosny, Bachelor of Science, Computer Science. Taiga Sato, Master of Science in Computer Science. Jamie McLennan, Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Daniel Andrake, Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. Paul Wright, Bachelor of Science in Technology Management. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, we're going to uh, start talking about the software design. Uh, from the design report, uh, this is an overview of software design. We're not going to really go into the uh, details of this uh, diagram because uh, we uh, have a lot to do in a little bit of time. Um, we we'll talk first about the uh, vision processing. Um, the first uh, acquisition of uh, images is done through a library that was supplied by the camera manufacturer, uh, Ideas Design out of California. Um, that software correlates pictures between, or correlates two images, pixels in each image, and determines uh, depth, X, Y, Z, information for each pixel. Uh, for uh, this year, we've got the flag detection that is new, so we want to highlight that here. Um, basically, our, our vision processing for flag detection uh, separates into, into three sections. First of all, we're able to detect what things occur off the ground. For example, there's arrows around the ground, things that are essentially floating out in space are these flags. Um, we're also doing a depiction of red versus the green uh, values. Anything that's not the color of the flag isn't evaluated for this. Um, when we combine the information about the, the red and the flag and the fact that it's off ground, we get the fact that we have a red flag at a particular location. Same thing with the green flag. Next slide, please. Um, for the actual uh, detection of the lines uh, for the lanes and the obstacles that are painted on the ground, um, we go through a multi-step process. First, we blur the image um, to get rid of the high-frequency uh, edges. Um, then we apply an edge filter. And you can see that the algorithm we use for our edge filter actually presents different colors at different types of boundaries. The boundaries between green and white actually produces this blue type of image. We can then uh, select off of that blue color and come up with the lines that actually exist on the uh, We're going to hand this over to John. For pet planning this year, we used a global grid. So as we traverse the obstacle course, we keep track of what we've already seen. Um, we're using OPA star, which is leads path A star. A star is a best first search heuristic, uh, which combines the cost of the path already traveled, as well as an estimation of the remaining uh, distance to the goal. So here, uh, this first image you can see a general A star. Uh, we're going from the green to the red. Uh, everything in purple is cells that actually got calculated by the algorithm, and this blue here represents the wall. Now the LPA star it retains these values, so next time if the obstacle course changes, uh, we don't have to recalculate everything. So as you can see here, this wall has opened up. The only cells that we have to reevaluate since we've saved our previous iteration are the cells that are in yellow, which uh, really reduces our processing time. During the early, mid to early stages of our project, we didn't have a physical robot to actually test our path planning and driving code with. So we used a popular open source software package called Player Stage to simulate our robot's path planning behavior. We um, incorporated predicted dynamics of the robot, um, predicted obstacle course. And in the next slide, you can see an example of Player Stage at work. On the right is Player Stage with the robot attempting to navigate from one waypoint to the next is in the navigation channel to the left. You can see instant gratification, which is a tool that we wrote to help us visualize our algorithms. Showing lines like the blue line depicting the robot's current heading, the red line with the desired heading. Using player stage helped us to identify several potential problems in our path planning code before we actually tested on the robot. Brian's going to talk about the JAWS code. Our JavaScript this year, it's SAE compliant. It was written in Java using UDP protocol. And we uh, tested and debugged it using our own custom developed common operating picture. 
which really helped us kind of make sure everything was fine-tuned right. On this slide, we're depicting how our actual JAWS handling works. We have a message coming in and out that contains a header and a payload. Our message manager breaks it down into each separate, pretty much, command that they could send us. And that's what interfaces with our robot to determine whether we're reporting back a position or speed or whatever we're doing. Then once we have that, we rebuild our message through our message manager and send it back out. Next, we have Paul talking about the design. Hi. Um... We were tasked with uh, developing a stable platform uh, for the uh, robot procedure and some of the uh, requirements required these features, low center of gravity, uh, we were reusing the motors from last year, we wanted to have a low moment of inertia, and the cambered wheel design uh, was a big step over last year's design. And one of the additions was using chain tensioners to be able to keep the wheels in synchronization with the existing motors which had the encoders on there. So to come up with that development, we used SolidWorks 3D CAD to be able to design the platform that you see here. And some of that involved determining motor layout and also uh, which uh, was the staggered position. The motors are put outboard to try and lower the polar moment of inertia. The weight box is mounted low, and then we have a hoop here for mounting cameras and the GPS. And then the tensioners are fit onto these motor plates. This all comes off as an assembly. We have single-sided axles here for easily removable uh, wheels, so in case anyone is damaged, uh, they're quickly re replaceable in the field. Uh, we have our lid that lifts up, and the computers are attached to the underside here. And you can see the display that we have is uh, shielded from the sun because that was one of the complaints they had last year that they couldn't see the display because of the bright sunlight. So we also developed a push rod suspension which is based similar to our Formula SAE car that uh, gives it the uh, balance over rough conditions and the robot is very balanced. It has, a, even without the suspension on there, it, it stays fairly level. So there's a lot of on there. Uh, the rest of the things here are ease of access and uh, accessible controls. You can see the battery trays here. That's one of the features we have is a single toolless removal, a thumb wheel back there. Pull out the battery trays and we can put in a recharged one so we don't have to charge on the vehicle and they have quick connectors. So the whole thing comes out as an assembly. And you can see the motors are mounted in here. These motor plates slide right on and off. So everything's designed to be serviceable and uh, with just a single Allen wrench the tools will fit in your pocket that we service the same way. So I think that covers most of it, and we have Brace to follow up. All right, uh, we're going to summarize some of the innovative features uh, of our robot. Uh, the camber wheel design, stability, uh, the improved large wheels, of course, gives us a better shock absorbing um, than uh, some of the smaller pneumatic wheels. Uh, the neutral balance thing is, is very stable. Um, low center of gravity keeps us from, from tipping over as we stop. Uh, low moment of inertia allows us to turn quickly without exerting a lot of, of torque on our wheels. Uh, to spin in place very easily. Um, new for this year our uh, path planning simulation based on the player stage. Um, very helpful. We're going to be able to use that in future years. Um, also new for this year our uh, common operating picture for the JAWS. Um, our improved image processing. Um, we're expecting great things out of that this year. Um, we also used, and we didn't mention it in the previous slides, an uh, image processing sandbox that allowed us to chain a, a bunch of filters together and test uh, various uh, you know, edge filters, blur filters, uh, things like that in different orders with different parameters. Uh, and that was very helpful as well in, in honing in on the image processing uh, algorithms. Okay, that concludes our presentation and we're uh, ready for question and answer. Okay.